Receive Signal Strength Indicator Value, or RSSI, is a relative value of the strength and quality of an RF signal being received by an antenna. There is no industry standard for calculating the RSSI value. Each chipset calculates how it was designed to by the manufacturer. Two radios at the same distance from the transmitter and in the same RF environments, subject to all the same noise and blockage, may display different RSSI values for the exact same signal. The 80211 standard states that RSSI is intended to be used in a relative manner and that absolute accuracy of the RSSI reading is not specified. It is usually measured during the reception of the 80211 frame preamble. The RSSI will be seen as negative dBm values. As you learned earlier, an RF signal weakens as it propagates. The largest portion of loss comes at about 5 meters away from the antenna of the transmitter. This loss is exponential, meaning the farther away the receiver is from the transmitter, the weaker the signal is going to appear to be and the RSSI values. In our previous example of RF math calculation, the EIRP was 20 dBm or 100 milliwatts. An intended receiver at a short distance away may actually have an RSSI value for that same signal of a mere negative 40 dBm. Relatively speaking, this is a weak signal compared to the EIRP. However, it's a great signal for Wi-Fi. Receiver sensitivity. The receiver sensitivity defines the minimum signal strength at which a data rate can be correctly received by a station. As stated earlier, receiver sensitivity varies by device and manufacturer. Vendors publish receiver sensitivity thresholds and they are usually referenced to dBm. Remember that dBm is an absolute measurement of power. RF sensitivity thresholds indicate power limit of received power required to support operations. The stronger the RSSI value, the faster the communications can be. Different applications have different minimum requirements to operate and to be most efficient. Since the received signal strength is a measurement of power present in a received radio signal, some receivers need to be closer to the transmitter than others to work well. Receiving devices at different distances from the transmitter will receive the signal at different power levels due to the propagation and obstructions in the airspace. Due to the allowed industry variance in RSSI calculations, it is important to plan your wireless LAN deployments around the needs of the client devices. For example, some Wi-Fi phones need a received signal strength indicator value of negative 67 or better to work properly, while others require a value of neg 65 dBm or better. You need to research the devices used within your deployments and build the environments to support those devices and the applications that they are using. Remember that there is no industry standard for the calculation of the RSSI values by the receiver and is, they are determined by the chipset that the device is using. It is of great importance when designing wireless networks to know the requirements of the intended client devices and applications. A deployment that works well for a laptop may not work at all for voice over Wi-Fi phones or location tracking. If you have a high noise floor, you may need to increase the transmit power levels remaining within the legal limits of your regulatory domain or add more access points than initially thought needed to cover the space. Design is about the needs of the clients and the environment in which they must work, not just coverage. If the noise floor is not negative 95 dBm, but is stronger, you will need to account for this when setting transmit powers. Some of the most common RSSI values used in deployments are negative 80 dBm for basic connectivity, negative 70 dBm for high speed connectivity, negative 67 to maybe neg 65 for voice depending on the particular phones you're using, and neg 62 for location tracking. Always verify the requirements with the device manufacturer and plan your least capable devices as being in that area for coverage. You may see in the field and on the exams you take situations in which everything was fine during your design, 
uh, during the deployment, but now there's additional noise for which you need to account in your environment. If you're not able to remove the noise, you may need to change channels or revisit your transmit power settings at different AP locations.